Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for tuning in. Hit subscribe this second. You want to be here the next two years at least. The pendulum has swung towards the side of sanity. We're going to see that this evening, tomorrow night as well, and throughout this month. This has been a fantastic month for Democrats. We're going to see midterm victories in the House and Senate for Republicans. And Donald Trump, Donald Trump will, Donald Trump will, according to reports, announce this evening. Okay? So he is going to announce this evening which will be absolutely fantastic. Absolutely, positively fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, what better way to start? It's an early Christmas present, let's put it that way. Okay, it is an early, early Christmas present. And, I mean, what better, what better present can you ask for? Um... What better present can you ask for than Donald Trump announcing right before, right before, ladies and gentlemen, a sweep in the House and the Senate. So hit subscribe to my super chat. I cannot do this without you, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to support this channel, you enjoy my work, your super chat support is greatly, 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 greatly appreciated. If you want to talk about Trump 2024... If you want to talk about any topic within reason or give me your thoughts or any compliment, whatever, via Super Chat, your support is greatly appreciated. Paul Bartlett, thank you so very, very much for starting off the Super Chat. Thank you. So let's get started. The Hill talk of early Trump 2024 announcement heats up with Monday bid a possibility. And... Forbes, Trump may announce 2024 presidential run tonight, report says. It's happening. Tonight is the night, baby. Donald Trump is announcing the absolute nightmare of morally superior, highly educated, wonderful, apparently very wealthy liberal Democrats. Um, One out of four Americans won't be celebrating Thanksgiving this year. So this is an interesting uh, 25%. 25% of Americans won't be celebrating Thanksgiving. But honestly, who needs who needs Thanksgiving when you can have Trump not tweeting? So at least Trump isn't tweeting. 25% of Americans will skip Thanksgiving this year to save money in Biden's America. So, to make up for crime, inflation, homelessness, uh, one out of four Americans won't have Thanksgiving. But at least Trump isn't tweeting, don't you understand? Could you imagine? We had household median incomes at record highs with Trump. We had real wages up with Trump. We had a growing economy with Trump. We had a great foreign policy, much better than the catastrophe we have now, sending Americans to Europe with an invasion under, under the watch of Democrats. Everything is worse. It's categorically and objectively worse. And if you believe otherwise, you're believing information that misinforms. Okay? But you look, ladies and gentlemen, and one out of four Americans will skip Thanksgiving. Okay? Is this worth Trump's tweets? I just, I'm just asking, is it worth Trump's tweets? Here, we can go ahead... Um, we can just go ahead. Is skipping Thanksgiving worth stopping Trump from eating eating democracy and tweeting? Because this is more of a, que- a rhetorical question for morally superior, highly educated lib- liberal Democrats. Is skipping Thanksgiving Worth, I put (laughs) work, stopping Trump from eating democracy and tweeting. So we can go ahead and, so no, obviously no, okay? I meant worth. Is skipping Thanksgiving worth stopping Trump from eating democracy and tweeting? Obviously not, okay? So yes, (laughs) 11% said yes. So you look, ladies and gentlemen, and Thanksgiving 
By the way, do not talk about Trump or Trump 2024 and Thanksgiving. Do not. Tanya, hello. Indy, hello. Eric Samurai, hello. Uh, David, hello. Do not talk about Trump during Thanksgiving. In the house of a morally superior liberal Democrat, they will throw the entire turkey at you. They would rather not have Thanksgiving. They would rather have high energy prices. They would rather have a possible annihilation in terms of uh, nuclear armament in Europe. They would rather have anything. Some people would literally rather have the end of the world and start over again with dinosaurs and prehistoric uh, cavemen. The obsession they have over Trump is not rational, reasonable, it's not normal, and it is... That's why they use the word information that misinforms. They cannot stand a different viewpoint. They cannot stand a different viewpoint, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? So, their idea of information that is accurate information suits their political objectives always. Any suspicion, any suspicion, ladies and gentlemen, of the Democratic Party is viewed as information that misinforms. What they really mean to say is they, um, what they really mean to say, ladies and gentlemen, is information that they don't have, a, a compelling and rational viewpoint that refutes their central argument, whether it's about foreign policy or the economy or a controversy that they're going through, Anything that refutes their viewpoint is called information that misinforms. You are informed correctly if you agree with Democrats. Francisco, hello. <laughs> hello. Adam, hello. And so, Sutek, hello. Um, information, ladies and gentlemen, that informs you in a way that that you would be suspicious of Democrats, that for some reason is always always leads to misinformation. So 25% of Americans will skip Thanksgiving this year to save money. Let's read this. Inflation has been forcing consumers to, to give different things up. It's true. For some people, Thanksgiving dinner could end up on the chopping block this November. Now, if this was if if we were experiencing this under Trump, it would be Trump ruined Thanksgiving. Trump destroyed Thanksgiving. But that's not the case. That's not the way media rolls. Okay. Pony Soldier, hello. Pony Soldier, thank you to my super chat. Thank you so very, very much. I cannot do this without you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Here's a question, okay? Okay, when will Democrats realize, do you realize, when will Democrats realize that, that Trump as, pre, Trump in 2024, Trump 2024 is, uh, when will Democrats realize that Trump 2024 is a good thing. Let's see. When they lose access to hold on. Uh, when 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 they have to when they have to give up. Let's see. Let me think. When giving up summer home. <laughs> When giving up summer home, or when million 401k goes to 500k. When will they realize? Check this out. Let me ask you this. When will Democrats realize that Trump 2024 is a good thing? When giving up summer home, when they have to sell their summer home? Or when their 401k goes to, when their million dollar 401k goes to $500,000, when will they realize that, you know what, Trump, Trump as, as president, (sighs) 
When will they realize this? The morally superior, highly educated among them. They're already skipping Thanksgiving, so. You have to ask yourself, at what point, at what point, people, exactly, Indy, at what point will they realize that Trump is actually a very good thing? Like, we need Trump to save this country from the turmoil. We need Trump, and let's let's look at the New York Post. Uh, Trump announced tonight, let's read the New York Post article. New York Post. Trump tells allies he could announce 2024 bid tonight. So, All right, so former president, uh, a well-connected Republican source, said the 45th president was telling people he might tonight, but it's not a dumb thing. He should. He should definitely do so tonight. Trump told several prominent conservatives over the past two weeks that he would formally throw his hat in the ring during his 8 p.m. appearance with Vance in Daytona, Ohio. So, but it's unclear if the notoriously mercurial, oh, let's see, hold on a second. It's unclear if the notoriously merc- mercurial, that's the great way of, of describing Trump, mercurial 76-year-old intends to actually do so on the eve of an, uh, midterms in which Republicans are favored to win the House and possibly Senate. So that would be, a, this is so classic, we're not going to know until he gets on the stage. So this is fantastic. This is fantastic. I mean, we all know he's going to run anyway. The The beautiful thing is that it's like the worst nightmare for Democrats. They have tried every single, they have tried everything to stop this man, and they cannot stop him. They cannot stop him. They cannot stop him, ladies and gentlemen. They can only hope to contain him. Exactly, Mitchell, exactly. Angela, hello. So this is actually an amazing, amazing thing. We had a record low in poverty under Trump. So here, two thousand nineteen record low poverty. CNN. Okay, this is for people who don't understand why you would want Trump. Median income hits record highs in twenty nineteen before Democrats gleefully tanked the U.S. economy in the most apoplectic and hysterical response to a serious issue. But that's the way Democrats roll. If they're not apoplectic and hysterical, yelling at the, And by the way, they won't have Twitter anymore. You have liberals getting banned off of Twitter for impersonating others, okay? Impersonating others. That's the thing. It's the impersonation. You cannot impersonate, okay? You cannot <laughs> you cannot impersonate. Andy, let me know who tweeted that. You cannot impersonate, ladies and gentlemen. That's the issue. Median income was 68,72019, but the poverty rate fell to 10.5% last year, the lowest on record. That's uh, down. Lowest since record started in 1959. Okay? That is the lowest since record started in, in 1959. What more can you, like, what more can you ask for from a president? What more can you ask for? I mean, I don't, I, like, the whole point in being a morally superior, highly educated Democrat is that you care about poor people. My question is, why would you not vote? Why would you not vote for Trump or Trump Republicans? 
Why would you not do that? Like, what is it about missing Thanksgiving and and real wages down 8.5%? We had, in in 2019, we had a record low. Poverty fell to a record low. Liberal Democrats, what is the problem with a record low in poverty? The whole point, the whole point is that, the whole point, ladies and gentlemen, is that you want a flourishing economy, a, a country that is on the upswing, not a country that is facing Turmoil in terms of foreign policy, which is Biden's foreign policy. Energy prices through the roof as they pontificate about an emergency regarding the climate. These people are all over the place. That's why they're going to get their you-know-what handed to them tomorrow evening. And we'll find out about New Hampshire and Nevada that night. New Hampshire, Don Baldick. If you're watching in New Hampshire, vote for Don Baldick. Maggie Hassan is the same thing. You cannot do the same thing all over always and expect a different outcome. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. People, they, 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 they colluded with social media companies. They colluded with Twitter. You had Twitter and the United States government working together. And that is a fact. Okay? It's all over now. You can look that up. And we had record highs in household median income, a record low in poverty. And you had, ladies and gentlemen, every, like we, we, people were doing objectively better in 2019 than they are now. But we had media that was his, like manic, like um, there was a mania, there was this hysteria hysterical, apoplectic, irrational response to everything Trump did. Everything he said, and it was all of media uniting with um, major corporations that run social media platforms. I mean, the entire American system joined together to stop Trump, and now we have Possible nuclear annihilation, a recession, and people skipping Thanksgiving. Congratulations, Democrats. You got exactly what you wished for. You got exactly what you wished for. One out of four Americans will skip Thanksgiving in Biden's America. Congratulations. At least Trump isn't tweeting. At least Trump isn't tweeting. Be here tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, I will have three live streams tomorrow. I'll have a live stream in the morning, live stream in the afternoon, live stream in the evening. And we're going to have an amazing time. We're going to have an amazing time because the pendulum is going to swing, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and it's like, it's like, you you look, ladies and gentlemen, and I don't think people realize, okay? I don't think people realize you don't have to skip Thanksgiving. You can vote for Trump and have a better economy. Okay, we had a great economy under Trump. I'm speaking to the morally superior, highly educated liberal Democrats who happen to stumble upon this channel. The socialists, the left-leaning, the Green Party. Don't vote Democrat, okay? Don't vote Democrat. There's no reason to vote Democrat unless you want a foreign policy catastrophe in Europe and... Uh, a further decline in the U.S. economy. We had real wages up. We had real wages up with Trump. Okay? Here, let's let's look. You can look, ladies and gentlemen, and um, real wages up 1.1%, uh, Bernie. Okay, so... This is Bernie Sanders trying to diss Trump. Okay, it only went up. Real wages only went up 1.1 percent. That's a horrible number. That's a terrible, 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 terrible number. Okay. Now let's just look really quickly at uh, 
Real wages are down 8.5%. Down 8.5% real wages. Dallas Fed. <clears throat> this is the Dallas Fed right here. More workers are finding their wages falling even further uh, behind uh, inflation. Okay, is this worth Trump tweeting? No. Bring on Trump's tweets because he'll be on Twitter. I have been saying that forever. Okay, 8.5%. The majority of employed workers' real wages, okay, the majority are down 8.5%. This is why Bernie Sanders is a good human being, but he is basically a fraud when it comes to any discussion on the economy. Because he will never actually, like, he will never actually look at things and give you the honest truth. So here, God, why is it so difficult? It's always so difficult. Here. For these workers... For these workers, the median decline in real wages is a little more than 8.5%, people. It's right there. Okay? It's right there. Real wages are down 8.5%. Leon, hello. Paul, thank you again to my super chat. Thank you. I can't do this without you. The ride ain't over. God bless you. God bless you. The ride ain't over. Thank you so very much always for the kind words and the positivity. And I do appreciate, uh, you know, your support. The ride ain't over. God bless you. And God bless the family. And God, and thank you so very much for watching. The ride ain't over. We're going to have an amazing, amazing November. Please be here also tomorrow. Tomorrow's party time, everybody. Party time. Excellent. The ride ain't over. Thank you again. 8.5% down. And then Bernard Sanders said, oh yeah, you want to know what? Donald Trump is the most harmful president we've ever had. Why? Because real wages only went up 1.1%. And that's nothing compared to the 8.5 percent that will that we lost in real wages under Biden, and this means that Trump is harmful, but Biden is good. This is what Bernie will have you will, will tell you. Real wages went up 1.1 percent in 2019. Real wages went down 8.5 percent in 2022, according to the Dallas Fed. But Bernie Sanders will not back Trump. Howdy, hello. Bernie Sanders will not back Trump. Paul, thank you. So, I mean, you tell me, ladies and gentlemen, does this make any sense to you? Does this make any sense to you? Let me just ask you, here, this is a question. Here's a question for you. Here's a question for you. This is something I'd love to ask Bernie Sanders himself. Okay. Why is Bernie Sanders okay with real wages down 8.5% with potato, but not okay with them up 1.1%? Um, why, why is Bernie Sanders okay with real wages down 8.5% with mashed potato, but not okay with them up 1.1% with Trump? That's a question because Bernie works for Dems because Bernie likes, likes poverty. Here's a question for you, everybody here. I need to ask this 
because I used to be the biggest Bernie Sanders booster on the internet, according to the Huffington Post. And I thought that Bernie Sanders cared about the economy. But when you look, ladies and gentlemen, why why is Bernie Sanders okay with real wages down 8.5% with mashed potato brains, Biden, but not okay with them up 1.1% with Trump? Because Bernie works. Why do I? Oh, I can't. I just spell things correctly. Because Bernie works for Dems? Or because Bernie likes poverty. <laughs> it's I mean it's, it's works for them, it's not worlds for them, but here. So So here you have 8.5% down. Real wages are 8.5% down. Why is Bernie Sanders okay with real wages down 8.5%? Paul, clank, Paul! What if the Dems held the Thanksgiving? And uh, <laughs> Paul, I love you. Let me just go ahead and, and I don't know if... Let's just remove the... Uh, Paul, thank you. We'll remove the the message, which is uh, greatly appreciated. Um, but <laughs> Paul Clank, thank you, thank you, Paul. Greatly appreciated. Thank you, sir. Dark Meta, hello. So, why is Bernie Sanders okay with real wages down eight point five percent with Biden? but not okay with with them up 1.1% because they were up 1.1%, people. This is Bernie Sanders. Real wages went up 1.1% last year. What he's trying to say is they didn't they didn't go up as much as 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 wages. But wages went up and real wages went down 8.5% with Biden. How would any supporter of Bernie Sanders cuz I used to be the biggest supporter of Bernie Sanders. I used to be the biggest supporter here. So Okay, so here. Paul Clank, thank you. Thank you so much. So here, Americans saw the most severe pay cut in 25 years. What, what, why is that worth, why would that be worth just like not hearing Trump tweet? Like, like I could, I could listen to Fetterman and Biden on continual loop if it made me more money. I would rather listen to whale sounds or a pod of dolphins communicate. I could I, I could decipher the sonar easier than Fetterman and Biden. I could actually know what these like a pod of dolphins were talking about or whales easier than I could if I listened to Fetterman and mash, mash potato brains one and two. But if it made me more money, I would do it. I would vote for Fetterman if it made me more money. Obviously, it's not. Let's see. In case you missed it, any answer. That's interesting. Let's see. Hold on one second. Let's see. <laughs> Hold on one second. Let me see. I Carol on thank you. This is why I'm not on Twitter. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
All right, let me see if... Oh, that's okay. That's all right. <laughs> that's no big deal. That's that's fine. Um, I Carolyn, thank you. So, the question is, why don't people just like MP? Thank you. Why don't people just simply like I would I would vote Democrat if it made me money, honey. I care about. Exactly, morally super. <laughs> ah, dark matter. If if it made me money, if it put money in my pocket, I'd vote Democrat. If if it didn't put, if I lost money, if I if if I was if voting rep, voting for Trump took money out of my pocket instead of literally putting money in my pocket, like we had record high in, in household median income, record low in poverty, but if voting for Trump hurt my pocketbook, I would not vote for Trump. So I don't understand Democrats who vote for Biden. You didn't even protect Roe. So, I mean, I understand the, yes, well, what am I supposed to do? Not vote Democrats? Like, well, the whole purpose of voting for Biden is that you would protect Roe and you got Dobbs. And you did that because you cheated Bernie Sanders. Bernie would have, Bernie Sanders at that point, okay, um, Bernie Sanders at that point would have won. Now, I know that people disagree with me, but Bernie Sanders in 2016 would have won. It was a moment in time, lightning in a bottle. He would have defeated Trump, but they went with Clinton. And I think that, God bless her, she's going to run again in 2024. I want that to happen. I pray every day for Hillary to run. Hillary, please, please. I pray to the God you don't believe in that you run again. Hillary Clinton needs to run again. And she could possibly win, God forbid, but you know what? Hey, it's it, it, I I I accept American democracy. If Clinton, if Hillary Clinton won, she would be president. But she needs to run again. It needs to be a Trump Trump Hillary 2024. Let's do this again. Okay? Okay. Let's do it again. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Like what's his name said? We'll do it live. Okay? I want Hillary Clinton to run again. She's the most qualified candidate since Thomas Jefferson. I think President Obama told us that. And we need to have that happen. You know what? You know what? We all need... We all need this. We need to see this again because we just need to see this again. Okay. We need to see this again because it's the only thing that will heal this country. And if you don't believe this, let's get it on. Let's get it on. You know what I'm talking about. Come on, baby. Let your love come out. If you believe in love, let's get it on. We need this to heal the country. We need to see this again. We need to see, we need to see Hillary again. Okay? We need to see Hillary again in 2024. I pray to God every day. Or we need to see this. Hold on. I got something. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, come on, man. I got something really important, man. I got something really important, man. (laughs) Exactly. I'm lurking. (laughs) 
Hey, I got something really important for you. Come on, man. Hey, Cornflakes has a message, man. <laughs> <Dark one. laughs> for free rain, leave Twitter, my friend. For free rain. Thank you for being to my new members. Thank you. For free rain, get off of Twitter. What did Arnold say? Get out of the chopper. Get into the chopper. Get out of Twitter. Let's get it on. You know who, what I'm talking about. Come on, baby. Yeah. Let your love come out. If you believe in love, let's get it on. Ooh. We need to see this again. Okay? We need Hillary running in 2024. We have to have it. We have to have it. Okay? No ifs, ands, or buts. Has to happen. <laughs> this is a good one, too. <laughs> yes! Love it! This is fantastic. And Jonathan Swan's reporting it. So based on calls, text this morning... So he might actually, based on, you know, Ohio, it, it would make sense for him because it's like an electric atmosphere. Lisa, hello. <laughs> it's got a big news, man. Startle Mouse, hello. Andy, because <laughs> it's Biden, that's why. So Jonathan Swan of Axios is reporting it. And we have Donald Trump. I mean, it's going to be beautiful. It is going to be beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. It is going to be really, really beautiful for a number of reasons. Okay? First... The meltdown, first of all, the Twitter melt, for, and you have people on Twitter getting banned and so, like because they're impersonating. And I have an impersonator. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, email Twitter also. I mean, this person, I think, has either been suspended or hasn't been on his account, but like, it does not say parody on that person's uh, profile. So, People are being banned. One fame, one pretty, uh, you know, large, well-known liberal YouTuber, Kathy Griffin. People are being banned on Twitter for impersonating Elon Musk. But see again, that's against Twitter guidelines. You have to put parody. That's another amazing upgrade. Exactly, it's an amazing upgrade. Because what took place is they will not have Twitter. You have to understand, this is the worst month since November of 2016 for Democrats. They don't have Twitter anymore. Trump is running. They've lost the House and the Senate. And if they lose another social media platform, because Facebook is is probably gravitating towards... Don't be surprised to see Facebook gravitate at least a little bit more towards Republicans. Ernie, thank you. Paris, hello. So don't be surprised if... Don't be surprised to see even Facebook because you have all of these platforms. You have all of these uh, platforms um, slowly allowing speech. And speech doesn't mean impersonating. Like, this is why Democrats and wonderful, morally superior liberals impersonate people on Twitter. What they do is, the reason they impersonate, here, I'll say Elon Musk. Twitter bans impersonators. Okay, so, you can't, if you must put uh, 
you must put a parody account on the Twitter profile. It's not difficult. Sewing, hello. Yes, exactly. Kathy, hello. Twitter is banning impersonators, but the imp- the reason that like the people who impersonate generally generally are morally superior liberal Democrats, and they do so to actually harm the people they don't like. They don't do so in terms of comedy, like for comedy. They do so because they just can't stand an opposing viewpoint. So they don't like the person, so they want to actually like put words in the person's mouth. You had one liberal YouTuber who only became liberal very recently for you know financial reasons. He lost like a million subs. It's like a million something subs on Twitter. Like, I mean, even if you're a millionaire, oh Lord, I can't do anything here. Even if you're a millionaire, um, like, oh God, it's still you. I mean, if you have a million subs on Twitter, if I had a million subs, a million people on Twitter, I'd probably keep maybe I don't know. I probably wouldn't keep the platform just because I got a thread on it years back. But Twitter bans comedians. So here, Kathy Griffin. And and they didn't ban Kathy Griffin for the headless photo of, of Trump, which is interesting. So, I know, (laughs) Brian, it's like, like, I cannot get a commercial without, you know, a pretty awesome uh, video or photo, but it's like, what? And that was CBS. That was CBS News. So, Twitter bans comedian Kathy Griffin. The, The whole point is you have to put, it's not just, you can have a parody. It must say parody in the profile, in the handle. So, the move resulted in the removal of an Elon Musk account held by comedian Kathy Griffin, who had changed her account name to match the... Going forward, any Twitter handles engaging in impersonation without clearly specifying parody will permanently be suspended. He added there would be no warning. (laughs) So, he's not playing around. It's so hilarious. They're so used to having Twitter as a way to try to torment people who don't, they don't like. Exactly. <laughs> you know, Kathy Griffin was is funny. Like, she used to be very, very funny. Now she just became obsessed with Trump. It's just like everybody, like, when you are, when you become obsessed with Trump, you lose the ability, like, you, you use whatever superpower, whatever... Um, talent, you lose a little of it. Because it's not its not rational or normal to be obsessed with Trump. He was a great president. The reason that people are... Um, the reason that people are um, obsessed with... The reason that people are obsessed with... Um, Trump is 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 because of like a personality thing. They're obsessed with Trump because of a person they they don't like his personality, so they're obsessed with him. In terms of the economy and foreign policy, he was a great he was a great um, he was a great president. I mean, that's the thing, you know. He was a great president, and that's why it makes no sense. That's why it makes no sense. And that's, I mean, impersonating people is different from parody. Uh, You have to put parody. But if you are trying to deceive through the impersonation, it's a big problem. Joan Rivers was very good. She was legendary, yeah. So. So. 
Exactly, Eric, exactly. So many of these people become the people they mock. So, I mean, how difficult is this to understand? Going forward, Twitter handles engaging in impersonation without clearly specifying here. I love also, like, the way Democrats think, like, no woman could actually be pro-life. The way Democrats think, like, do it for women. It's like, no, what, you don't think there's any woman out there that's pro-life? Like, they live in their own bubble. That's like, you know. <clears throat> so... It's so easy too. Here, it's just this is actually a good headline. Elon Musk bans impersonation without parody label. You have to put parody. The reason they don't put parody is they actually want to deceive people. They don't just want to let people know it's a parody. They want to actually deceive people. That's the thing. They want to deceive. They want to get as many people as possible to truly believe that the person they don't like is saying something, okay? And it's also to insult. It's not so much, that there's some satire there and, you know, but it's mainly like, the, they don't, Democrats don't like to actually defend their vantage point. If they can't silence or suppress you, they will insult you. So it's one or the other. It's either silencing debate and suppressing any other viewpoint or going after and insulting a person so by the way i will be back ladies and gentlemen at around 6 30 p.m so we'll do about 10 more minutes i will have another live stream today at 6 30 p.m people so be here for the live stream at 6 30 p.m i mean people uh, tomorrow please 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 be here all day on this channel i know that you're going to be on a great many channels um I know you're going to be on a great many channels, um, but um, definitely stop by. Phil, hello. Definitely stop by here. And so it's happening. I mean, obviously, Elon Musk has a more conservative viewpoint on a lot of things, okay, because he, he, he actually doesn't. He's not like a, a staunch conservative. Most people who 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 are like Elon Musk, they'll vote. I like if a Democrat was better for the country, I would vote for a Democrat. If he was, if if it was categorically better for the country, like we had a better economy, and we had an anti-war, anti-counterinsurgency conflict, foreign policy. I am against counterinsurgency conflicts. MP, hello. I am against counterinsurgency conflicts and never-ending military conflict. And if you had a, a Democrat, that by the way, Democrats used to be like that. Democrats used to be like that. But he's announcing, ladies and gentlemen, he is announcing. And be here for the announcement. Um, I will have, I mean, you know what? If he announces, so... Um, if he announces, let's say... Um, let's say... Let's say Trump announces... When's the J.D. Vance rally? So, there's a three-hour time difference. The Vance rally, uh, Vance rally should be in an hour or so, right? So, it should be in about an hour. MP, it's cold. Cold for me. 
Cold for people in California is not cold for people anywhere else. Andy, hello. Thank you. And so, we'll see. We'll see. Um, like I said, be here Be here tonight at around 6.30 or 7.30 because I will have a live stream after hopefully he announces tonight, people. And we can part. It's the pre-party. You know, back when Los Angeles or New York had nightlife and you could walk the streets without, you know, fearing, risking your life, uh, generally, you, you were never safe at 3 a.m. in the morning anywhere. But New York and Los Angeles were very different places. Um, very different places. 15, 20 years ago, very different. Very, very, very different. Um, but we'll party. We will party tonight, people. It's going to be amazing. Be here, like I said, at, and around about 6.30, 7.30, um, Trump will have already announced. So that'll be fantastic. We'll have a lot of fun. Uh, we will have a lot of fun. I mean, just to just to hear him announce the energy, the passion, the enthusiasm. He was a, objectively a great president. Like, objectively, we had a great economy and a great foreign policy. We now have an invasion in Europe that happened under Biden because of his foreign policy. It is 100% because of his foreign policy. He didn't negotiate with you-know-who, and he should have negotiated. He should have negotiated. He should have negotiated, so... Exactly, Kathy. When Giuliani was running the city, it was much safer. Much safer. That's the thing. It's like, Democrats don't realize criminal justice reform is not for violent criminals. It's for people who are like caught with possession or nonviolent uh, cr crimes. But they don't get that. They're like, the average Democrat is like an artificial intelligence robot that's programmed without any understanding of basic logic or nuance or context. So like criminal... Reform, justice, reform, everyone gets out, no bail. It's like, no, 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 you want to actually keep people in who are serious maniacs, serious like threats to society, who will commit violent acts. You want to keep those people in. Uh, no, justice, reform. It's like, no, 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 you don't get it. <laughs> criminal justice reform was for people who were convicted of nonviolent criminal offenses. But anyway, they don't get it. Same with uh, climate, the crisis climate. So, ladies and gentlemen, be here tonight. Andy, thank you. Be here tonight, everybody. About 7 p.m. Pacific. We should know. Or we should know. Um, we should know when Trump um, hopefully announces, which will be fantastic, which would be absolutely amazing, people. I mean, it'll be, it would be absolutely amazing. The red wave is coming, ladies and gentlemen. Be here tonight at 7 p.m. And uh, be here all throughout tomorrow, my friends. Please do. Eric Samurai, everybody here. Robert, hello. Tammy, hello. Everybody, JJ, hello. All right, people. I'll see you at around 7 p.m. Pacific, people. Brian, hello. I'll see you about 7 p.m. Pacific, everybody.